Hello and welcome back once again everybody to the BOCE, the Battle of Central Europe Season 3, free, 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 sponsored by the awesome Steel Series, eBattle, Minotech, Hitbox, eSportsBets.com, GGNet for helping us out, having item bets enabled as well for these games guys, so check out GhostoGamers.net for awesome item bets and just really awesome coverage, the tickers, everything is done correctly from them, Daily Dota 2 of course, as well for just keeping updates live for the games but in any case guys we are Hefla TV or I'm from Hefla TV at least the English coverage for you for the entire tournament we're gonna be running a two channels at least for the group stages simultaneously Hefla TV HP1 is also going at the moment with Denial versus uh, My Insanity so lots of Dota already in the past days plus more to come as well when the playoffs are reached and whatnot so looking at this draft now Funny enough, Death Prophet actually makes it through the pool power rangers. Panning out the Chikiro, they know how much Aftershock love it. So they take it out, but I think maybe giving away the Death Prophet might be even scarier. But Io and Battler, once again Aftershock, going for the exact same bands as they did in game number one. Power rangers do like both of those heroes rather well, so it makes sense. Really team specific fans coming out. But power rangers now, what do they go for? I think Tidehunter is still going to be one of those heroes that they want to pick up. Or do, do they want to just go for like really heavy roaming strategy early on? Just have extremely aggressive supports that can shut down the Death Prophet? It's not easy of course. Because Death Prophet, he can attack from quite a range and just spam crit spawn. So he can stay rather safe when the offlaner just calls like, Hey, I don't see the supports, they're not harassing me, I'm getting XP. So Death Prophet just play, play safe, back the hell up to your tier 1. But Power Rangers starting with a Brewmaster and is the other one going to be that lovely Tidehunter that... Power Rangers used in the last game as well. Or did they feel like Tidehunter did not get enough accomplished? So are they going to go for a different hero? Sky of Mage, of course, is still available if they want to. They could go for the Legion Commander them, uh, not themselves, once again. Although they could leave it for later. So yeah, going for a Revengeful Spirit. And that's just instant Tidehunter pick for Aftershock. Tidehunter, Death Prophet. It's scary for team fight. It r really is. Plus, of course, Death Prophet silenced can be enough to delay out maybe Brewmaster's ultimate and if you get ravaged and the exorcism is just going through the team fight you are in for an extremely bad time it's it's not even funny how bad of a time you're gonna have there now though looking at the next set of pants aftershock banning out the rubik they want to make damn sure that their ravage does not get stolen power rangers though taking out the slark it's, I can't say it's like a complete respect ban just because Slark is overall a pretty strong hero, but Aftershock, they know how to play that hero, they, they've used it so many times already, I mean, last game, the Slark itself wasn't like the hero, I think Chakiro did like most of the work just with the Liquid Fire, and Power Rangers, I think that's pretty much why they banned out the Chakiro as well, even though he died quite a lot and didn't have the craziest of farm, but he got enough liquid fires off every single time before he died just because power rangers lacked the split push to deal with it or they didn't have any mobile heroes that have like boots of travels or have a remnant or replicate something like that behind to join the team if need be but push out another lane at the same time but now throw ranger also banned by aftershock whereas power rangers their own fourth ban is going to be shiranai who knows got no clue what they want to go or what they would favor even running Yes. Huh. What could they ban out now? There are so many choices. So many choices. Let me think a little bit. You can... Tr I mean, banning, banning out supports would make sense for sure. Witch Doctor is pretty good against Brewmaster. Wood Restoration can keep you alive against the Brewlings. As well as Paralyzing Cast bounces through the Brewlings. So it's just gonna be bouncing almost forever. And they're not going for anything, are they? I hope J4 isn't disconnected. No, no, he's not. He's here. All, all is fine. I guess it is a tough choice. Maybe they're thinking about the third core to ban out. And they ban out the Weaver. Wow. Okay then, Power Rangers. I guess they're not going too lockdown heavy. Aftershock could try to punish it with something like a Storm Spirit as well, I guess, if they want to. Safely in Storm Spirit is not too bad. Not too shabby, to be honest. So, Aftershock now. Third? What's going to be the third? Ban. Pick, pick rather, not ban. I don't know. I'm a little bit distracted. 
as I always am, not always, I lie, I'm not always distracted, but only when things are slower, then, then I start looking at other stuff. So they could go for like a multitude of things at the moment, to be honest. What could be the best possible solution though? I mean, just going for any support, I still, well, I guess Witch Doctor, as good as it still would be against Brewmaster, against Ancient Apparition it does fall off a little bit. You could go for a Viper and set up an aggressive tri lane, that I wouldn't mind at all, to be honest, by Aftershock at the moment. Just... Wouldn't it be nice? I, I think it would be pretty good even just... Viper, another tanky core for themselves. Somebody who can build a pipe rather easily for their team and just have the Thailander free for the straight of Blink Dagger. But no, whoa, they go for a Tusk instead, okay then. We still might see something like a Visage come in as the fourth pick now as well. Tusk with the familiar to Snowball is actually pretty strong. As Power Rangers, going for a Lycan now. They're just going for the push style. Vengeance Aura will help out a little bit with the damage as well. Vengeance Aura plus Vladimir's offering actually helps out a great deal even. Lycan can keep up with anybody, so that's a good sign. Run, run away from the Snowball, not too hard for him either. Aftershock now, I would like the Storm Spirit even more now, just because Storm Spirit is one of the heroes that can, first of all, surprise jump a Lycan, so he can't even activate the Shapeshift. And even if you activate Shapeshift, Disruptor. you're going to be able to disable him a little bit and then just get the kill. But Disruptor was the pick instead for Aftershock. Static Storm, of course, excellent uh, ability to try to deal with the Brewmaster. Get him in the Kinetic Field, Static Storm, and he can't run anywhere. If you get the Lycan in the Static Storm, he cannot activate Shapeshift, so he can't run anywhere. And... Which is the second guys. If you're wondering that Moscow 5 International is playing against CCK right now, it's it's a tiebreaker game. It's just a best of one tiebreaker game, not the playoffs. We haven't reached the playoffs yet, although they will start at on the 18th. So two days from now on Tuesday, we're gonna have the playoffs already kick in for this tournament. I think we're gonna have like two best of threes per day. If I'm not horribly mistaken, but now. Medusa, the last ban from Power Rangers, Aftershock banning out a Nature's Prophet, so no extra push, plus of course Nature's Prophet would have filled the offlane role that Power Rangers do need. So, no Nature's Prophet, no Mass Rat Dota, I guess, although Power Rangers could go, still go for something else. What what else can actually push heavily? Or, uh, they don't need extra push, I mean, Lycan usually is enough, to be honest, but offlane wise, they could try to go for a Centaur, I mean, Stampede is a nice ability plus. Uh, blink hoof dump double edge into ice blast definitely enough to kill most heroes most of the time disruptor can be a little bit annoying with the glimpse and everything but tusk and disruptor shouldn't be able to harass the center too heavily to be honest on the lane but aftershock what will their last pick be i still think storm spirit would be pretty nice at the moment looking at the lineups power rangers they don't have almost any lockdown against them ice blast this is yes it's going to be annoying Brewmaster, I guess you can always throw people up in the air when you have the primal split, but that's like eh. Plus, Storm Spirit, with the Orchid, you can disable Lycan from going for the shapeshifts. You can make it so the Brewmaster can't primal split. But we'll see. Power Rangers, they have about 13 seconds left to go for a Doombringer, so I guess that's going to be their offlaner now. Definitely good here against Tidehunter if you can get the Doom before the Ravage comes out. But if the Tidehunter has, blink has a Blink Dagger, even if Doom has his own as well, Tidehunter should be always staying farther back. Although it depends how they want to use it. If they want to initiate themselves, yes, Tidehunter is going to be the first one in. But then he's also going to pop the ultimate immediately, at least usually so. So Doombringer, it might be a worthwhile pick, but it might be just slowing down the Lycan a little bit as well. So we'll see what the Aftershock go for, because at the moment it's not like their late game is like crazy strong themselves, so... Even a Lycan might be able to munch through people, because Lycan, he hurts with the right clicks. He has the built-in crit, if he has the shapeshift, he's hurting for quite a lot of damage just because he has the Feral Impulse passive, which increases his damage, then the Vladimir's offer, offering, and of course, then the Vengeance Aura on top of it, and maybe even a Pack Leader's Aura from the Doombringer. That would be just a lot of auras, a lot of just damage from pretty much nowhere. You don't even need too many items if you have the, the, that many auras. But after shock now, what do they go for as their own fifth? What could they get away with? Or what do they feel like is going to be strong enough to take on what Power Rangers have? I mean, you could go for Spectre if you want to aim for late game. And it wouldn't be the worst hero. 
But I really think they lack the lockdown for Lycan at the moment. Yes, they have the glimpse of Disruptor to bring him back. But if he comes back, he's just probably gonna run away again. Maybe if you get the Kinetic Field, I mean, that's gonna be pretty good, of course. Kinetic Field might be one of the best options to try to deal with a Lycan. But they also need the damage to finish him off. At the moment, Exorcism, yes, it's gonna be nice. So they do go for the Spectre in the end. So that's going to be the late game carry for Aftershock. I guess maybe they didn't even dis just consider the Storm Spirit at all. Maybe they were like, yeah, screw it. Spectre, go for a traditional hard carry. And well, they might have the time to farm up a Spectre, but depending on how much farm the Lycan gets, they might not have any farm at all. Lycan is going to be in the mid lane, up against the Death Prophet, so not going to be the easiest lane. Ancient Depression and Vengeful Spirit, they are decent uh, just roamers, but Lycan can't help out at all, except for just the wolf damage and maybe just a few right clicks. Can't slow, can't set up the kill the initiation at all. But to introduce the lineups to you guys for the second game of the series, and oh no, this missed this. I put it to the wrong side. I put it on the freaking wrong side. Was it Aftershock Tire before? No, no they weren't. So guys, it's actually Aftershock 1-0. So my bad. Aftershock is 1-0 instead. I wish I just had something to blurt it out with. But good luck, have fun has been called. So I'm going to introduce the teams anyway. Magoma playing on the Tusk. Leaving Jellopy on the Spectre with Seroji on the Disruptor. But again, an aggressive try from J4. Chaislo playing the Brewmaster. Leaving Sonneko on the Vengeful. J4 on the Ancient Apparition. With Tichara on the Lycan. And Cheshire Cat on the Doombringer. And for Ashok, the last two will be Mind Control on the Death Prophet. And Kefka on the Tide Hunter. I had no idea why I wanted to introduce the Trident of Power Rangers. I guess I was expecting some action to come. Man, those... T I get too easily distracted sometimes. Did this threw me off guard. I'm gonna keep the mouse like this at all times. So Power Rangers, they don't have an actual lead. It was just my bad of setting things up. Why the hell did I think it was Tire? I don't know. I really have no clue. Now, Chester Cat with the Haste Drone. Gonna scout out Kefka. Place down the Observer Ward as well. Kefka, no sentries, of course, but this should be a favor favorable lane for Tide Hunter. Maybe Chester Cat, it somewhat depends on what creep he's gonna get as well, but he's gonna eat the creep first. He saw Kefka body blocking the B camp as well, so he was like, yeah, I'm not gonna waste any time like that. So nicely done, but there's the Magic Missile on to Chelopi. Chester gonna go in with the Thunderclap. Chilling Touch already used, and the Ice Shard. Not gonna be nearly enough. That's a really fast first plot for Power Rangers. Taking the early advantage, but of course, they did the same in game number one. And in the end, it didn't work out for them still. But we shall see. We shall see. Doombringer, of course, should get guaranteed farm. Although it's not easiest to go up against Tidehunter, at least not from some point onwards. He still has the Devour, and I expect him to even go for the Hand of Midas. Which might be the same case for Lycan, depending on how well his mid lane goes. Sometimes it's like uh, Vladimir's offering into... I was offering into that hand of Midas even, just get a slightly del delayed one. Uh, one and a half minutes in, the first plot is the only thing that has happened so far, but in this tri lane versus tri lane, we might see quite a lot more happen. But Disruptor, not the greatest tri lane hero. Tusk is like decent ish, but Spectre also rather weak, to be honest. So, the choice from Power Range to go aggressive try and definitely a good one. Brewmaster also just such a tanky hero. Plus, they have the Howl to give extra damage. Teacher drops pretty low mid lane, mind control. Cannot follow up. Not low enough of a cooldown quite yet on the Crypt Swarm, of course. No, not enough points into the Witchcraft. Otherwise, Teacher might have been in a crap ton of trouble. This Death Prophet. I, I'm not too sure. I, I think this outfit. The cosmetics aren't the greatest, but. It's the same hero, so it doesn't really matter in the end. Now Tichara even goes for some right clicks harass. Has the wolves as well, but wolves are only level 1, so not that scared at all. Chester Cat in the meantime has found himself the swiftness aura, as of course the thunderclap as well. From that uh, Hellbear Smasher. So, power is to keep on going. Looks like Shashla, he's gonna go for... No, Orb of Venom, I thought just he's gonna up a finish up a Ring of Pazzi. Ring of Pazzi is always a nice thing to have if you're going in any tri but aggressive tri more so because you will actually be fighting, you're going to be using your mana. So you would want to have some form of mana regeneration. 
But Orb of Venom can have its purposes as well. And once again, if you just tuned in, Power Rangers does not actually have a one game advantage. It's a shock. It's just me having failed the overlay. Or not the overlay, but uh, the setting of who won. So yeah, guys, don't mind the, over the score on the top side. In the meantime, looking at the farm, Chishakat has three less, four less now than Kefka, and of course Kefka. He gets more levels, he's getting tankier himself with the Kraken Shell, has the Anchor Smash as well. Soon to have Arcane Woods, which are going to help out even more. So Chishakat, scores here for the use as well. The Anchor Smash against melee heroes, against most melee heroes at least, in for that case, is almost impossible for you to win that lane. Now Disruptor, he even went into the mid lane, but he's still level 1, no glimpse. Just a measly Thunderstrike, he can't do much of anything. Is he really rotating top lane or what, what's his plan here? What's Seroji doing? He's just sacrificing bot lane. There's the magic missile. I don't think they're gonna have enough follow-up. The ice shards come out as well, making it so that Shashlo cannot go for the primer. Not the primer, but now they're going for Cello instead. What? He got crit as well. One more right click. Well, no, make it two more. Magic missile used. Not entirely necessary, but kill secured. Making damn sure that they get the kill. Shashlo, only level one uh, thunderclap at the time. God, I'm even messing up the names now. God damn. So, but still 2-0. Really nice aggressive try lane. Uh, Ishok, they have nothing to do with Inspector. He isn't getting anything at all. He has died twice already as well. And at least Lycan isn't getting a crazy amount in the mid lane. Uh, and Tide Hunter is getting slightly more than the Doombringer. But Doombringer, he's devouring creeps. So he's getting gold from that, of course, as well. When is the point the Power Rangers are going to just... not Maybe sacrifice would be the wrong word for the bottom lane, but... How the supports roam around. I mean, Brewmaster should be self-sufficient as well if he has the same levels as Spectre. Although, they might want to keep Spectre at bay as long as they humanly can. Because that's just going to buy way more time for them to be able to get Lycan farmed up. Get the Necrobox going. Just go for tower after tower and Spectre if he can farm. Aftershock, they aren't like that scary. But of course, Kefka on the Tidehunter. Off to a pretty decent start at the moment. Death Prophet. 37 and 13 as well. Highest farmer in the game. As to be expected, Lycan cannot really... Stop Death Prophet from farming at all, like cannot slow him down in the slightest. It's not really even a contest, I mean Death Prophet, Crypt Swarms, just so spammable, so good. Especially if you have more points into Witchcraft already. And, well, looks like it's rather passive apart from the aggressive trilane that has gotten 2 kills. But 6 minutes in for aggressive trilane to have 2 kills, it's not all that much, I mean Soneko. Even if he gets the stun on Spectre, Shashlo might not be able to close, get close enough. He even went for power trace, but now, when he gets the Thunderclap first, now just, just some harass. Orb of Venom as well, ticking Spectre even lower. So, so far up the hero. Now Soneko runs into Magoma, but Magoma not gonna take the fight with Vengeful. He's two levels below him. Disruptor is still level 1, now he's level 2 now. But that, that's just him leeching XP from where he shouldn't. Level 2 on both, whereas level 4 on all of Power Rangers. Mid lane. Oh, do they have shapeshift? Yes, they do. Mind control might even be some form of trouble. There's the stun coming out. Minus armor as well. Tichara finally goes for the ultimate. Should have gone for it a little bit earlier and they can't get the kill anymore. Kefka comes in. He has the Ravage, of course. Can they get some Neko? Another creep form. There's the Ravage. They're gonna get, catch the tail end of it. Tichara gonna come back in. Gonna dodge the crystal. Ice shards and... Now, is he gonna get caught? Do they have the glimpse? Nope. Just a kinetic field, Tichara. I think it's gonna be safe. He wants to turn it around. There's the snowball as well. There's the glimpse. And the ultimate in Stitcher, he did absolutely nothing with the shapeshift and just fed away his life. He should have popped the ultimate as Vengeful, Vengeful Spirit was about to come out of the enemies. Because they just lost all of the time that the magic missile was there. And they couldn't follow up anymore. Nice TP assistance of course from Aftershock. Can't take that away from them. So really nice reactions from them. Getting the two counter kills as well. You would think that like Ravage onto Vengeful Spirit might not be uh, worth it, but in this case it is for sure. And this early on, you're probably not gonna have like huge team fights blow out up anyway. And also an exorcism from the Death Prophet to bring down the tier one tower rather low here. And it's still gonna last for long enough. Although the creep wave gonna get dragged away. The wolves onto mind control with the minus armor, with the wave of terror. Do quite a nasty amount, but a shock. They know Power Rangers have no heroes to punish them. Nothing that can just catch up, although J4 getting pretty close to level 6 dangerously, so even if they just had one Ice Blast in the mid lane, if only.
But Ashok, I'm pretty sure they knew that there was nothing really threatening them. Chaislo does have level 6 now. We'll have the Primal Split. No Blink Dagger, but Primal Split itself might be scary enough with a level 3 Thunderclap. He might even be able to get a solo kill onto Spectre, but Spectre. With a Spectral Dagger, might be able to just get into the trees into safety. That's the one bonus of a Spectre. Although, it's not like an immediate blink out. It's still something you can just... You get... I don't, I don't know even how you call it. Just path walking, not path walking. Top lane in the meantime, they're going for Chief for ancient depression. He had the Ice Blast, so we got the counter kill. A one for one. Tide Hunter killed Chief 4 before, so Chief 4 didn't get any extra experience. Just like that, dropping extremely low, just farming up the jungle, but... That's almost his hand of minus stun, almost. So he has decent farm and still Spectre has almost nothing. Six last hits, although he's been solo against Chachlo for some time. There's the Primal Split coming out. Will he pop? No, not the Primal Split. Why do I say Primal Split every time when he thunderclaps? I don't know. So Neko, he's trying to soak up his level 6 as well to have that uh, nether swap available to him. In the meantime, Tichara farming up the jungle to get that Vladimir's offering finished. Still needs about 300 extra gold. More bit mask and the recipe. Bottom lane charge law. He doesn't have enough mana, but the Ice Blast is coming. Thunderclap, does connect and one more right click. They don't need any more. J4 gets the kill, gets the shatter. Really nice setup onto the Spectre. They don't really even need more. Although charge law now is completely out of mana. Doesn't have any bottle. Maybe Arcane Boots would have been slightly better, or maybe he really wanted to tank up enough. Not even a magic one, so... At the moment, if he got jumped, he wouldn't be able to do anything at all, except just try to run, hope that his Drunken Brawler will be enough. Top lane. Oh, TP is out. Do they want to go mid lane? Yes, they do. Mind Control is getting chased down, but into the Exorcism. The swap back. Magic Missile, but Tichara is going to get close enough again. He has a double damage. He doesn't need much Ice Shards. Not going to be enough, but the Snowball will. There's the Ravages. Oh, no, it's again. It's happening again, guys. So, Neko is going to get gushed up. They need, like, one more Crypt Swarm. They're going to get it as well, most likely. Healing Cell keeps him alive for a little while. But a few more right clicks. Magic Stick. And come on. They're going to chase him down, right? Not enough mana for a gush. Ice Shards. Not enough for that either. Not enough for a Crypt Swarm. Are you kidding me, Sonic? Are you really outrunning this? Snowball. Well, that's the kill. They did tie pretty far. Chaslo coming in, but he doesn't have a Blink Tiger yet, so he just pretty much DP'd in for nothing. Oh, God. I mean, the idea was nice to just swap out the Lycan and Magic Missile, but the assistance from Aftershock coming in like that. The Snowball. The Snowball saved the Death Prophet. Of course, Ravage to follow. It's just not working. At least Jaisal gonna get the deny onto the mid lane tier 1, so that's a positive. But oh man. And of course Spectre still doesn't have anything, so... Power Rangers, they have plenty of time to just mess up like this. But Tichara, 11 minutes in, still does not have even the Vladimir's offering. He has a reasonable amount of last hits. Some of them are jungle creeps, so... Doesn't tell the entire story here. J4 though, has the point booster, has enough for another part for the Aganim Scepter. So maybe Agony Scepter Ancient Depression early one is gonna also help out greatly. I mean, if you get hit by the Agony's Ice Blast plus you're doomed, you are pretty much dead. A Shock, they don't have anything that would say save you. So Neko going for the swap, stun not to Disruptor, but the glimpse is there before. So no kill, so Neko just use the swap. I mean, nice attempt. But that's about it. Tichara has the Vladimir's offering now, he's level 9 as well. Might be able to solo Roche, at least. I mean, if Vengeance, Vengeful Spirit comes close enough, he can just wave off Terror and he's gonna be fine. Top lane though, they're gonna go for the fight. Doom onto Kefka. And J4, he's gonna go down. Water Spines as well. Or yeah, right, yeah, he goes down. Kefka is gonna stay alive as well, I think. I don't think he's gonna burn down. And in the meantime, they're gonna chase down Cheshire Cat. Just easy two kills once again. Every time Power Rangers try to do something after Shock, they turn around and get the better exchange. Yes, my control has his Yule Scepter already, 1.4k in the bank after that. And although Doombringer has quite a lot of farm as well, it's just Hand of Midas, pretty much. Now has the face boost as well, but no items of just substance. Son Neko with Ticharado in the meantime. They know tier 1 is getting pushed after shock. They're all on the top lane, so go for Roshan. Minus armor from the Wave of Terror comes out. Vengeance Aura level 1 as well. So they should be able to get it before after shock comes there. Ice Blast does connect onto 2 top lane. Tower got denied by Shashlo as well, so actually not too bad. He has the blink dagger on the Brewmaster, so they have still plenty of time to just fight. I don't know what that lol was about. 
But Roshan, it's going down, that's for sure. And uh, oh, a smoke from Aftershock. They have the Static Storm as well. Can they catch Judge Law before he gets the blink out? They have vision of him, they need silence, they need some damage to disable the blink. And Thunderstrike, Static Storm, Thunderstrike, Snowball comes in as well, Kinetic Field comes out in the end, and it's gonna be enough to get a kill. Oh, that setup, just beautiful stuff, and they still have the Ravage, Blink Ravage is there, Cheshire Cat doesn't have the ultimate, Ice Blast onto Kefka, Ice Vortex to slow them down. And nothing else, nothing else happened. And guys, just to update once again, if you just tuned in, it is actually a 1-0 lead for Aftershock, I just messed up. Uh, which team is, or, or rather, the team who won the first game, what side they're going to be on. I don't know how I managed to, to do it, but in any case, it's actually Aftershock 1-0 Power Rangers at the moment. Not the other way around. So, don't mind this. I cannot change it in-game because it's from Dota itself, not uh, an OBS overlay or anything. Bottom lane of Tichara, going for the push of the tower with the Aegis. He feels confident enough. He's just going to... Never mind, not going to sacrifice his life. Activates the Invisible, but he gets Yule Scepter up just before he gets out of tower range. And he's going to lose the Aegis. Do they have enough lockdown to get him a second time around as well? With a Ravage, it's like maybe... They're going to have the Static Storm. Never mind, some cooldown. They pop the Ravage. They're going to have the Glimpse level 4 as well. They don't even need it. They get the kill. Oh, God. And the tower survives. It's going to get denied now. Just insult to injure it. Horrible. <laughs> what, what, other can, what else can I say? Just... They can't do anything at all. Cheshire wants to come into the mid lane. He has the Doom. Is he really just going to go Doom Tusk? I'm not too sure if it would even be enough. He has the level death, so that's good at least. He hits pretty hard as well. So Neko, if he gets the swap, stun. Tusk should be dead, but he's going to run into Kefka now. But he, he can't Doom. Oh, yes, he can. He's going to Doom up a Tidehunter. Tidehunter, he might even go down. There's the minus summer as well. He's taking more damage than I expected. With a double damage on Cheshire Cat. And, well, he gets denied. So, the Doom, more or less, in the end, still didn't accomplish anything. Well, Tidehunter lost 300 gold, so I guess that's positive. But they get the kill. Mind control in the meantime, 2.7k in the bank. Yes, J4, he's on the run. Oh, the Haunt is used. They're gonna go for the kill. Chelope comes in as well. J4 pops out the ultimate. Doing a reasonable amount of damage, but there's the Snowball coming in. And actually... It took them a really long time to kill J4. That's because just point booster and ogre club. He was about 100 gold away from getting another piece done. But he died just before. In the meantime, of course, Power Rangers. Did they? Did, what? The tower wasn't denied? Are you kidding me? It was just easy goal for Chaslo, I guess. Now Sirochi has the static storm. It's gonna be a bait. Do they have the ravages? Well, no, they don't, unfortunately. The Thunderstrike comes to Chaslo, comes out first. J4 trying to back off already. Afraid of the blink jump. Wolves now scouting things out. Mind control comes in as well. Has a level 2 exorcism. Cliff is used on the tower. They know Siroji is around. Blink. Anchor smash. He's gonna get stunned now on the tide after Blink. But there's the static storm. Will catch too. Judge Law. Can they bring Brewmaster down before he gets the ultimate off? They might. He's so close. Swap back. But now he goes down just in the end. Death Prophet gets the kill. Chester Cat now. A nice ice blast. Snowball used. They're gonna lose the disruptor. 100% Chester Cat. He's not gonna get chased down. He's just too fast for the snowball. Now Teacher Eye is still alive. Water is punched up. They're gonna lose on Nako, but mind control out of mana. Gush onto Teacher Eye. Shapeshift. Once it ends, it's gonna be slowed down for a little while. Eye shards. They don't connect. Mind control tries to chase down Cheshire Cat. Crypt Swarm. I think it missed. Exorcism still brings him down though. The spirits, the bats look weird, but they get the kill and Teacher Eye. Oh, they got vision of him. You are screwed. He might go for the TP out. They will have the snowball. If they see it, they pop the Ravage just to be on the safe side. So that's another kill. And did they really only lose the Disruptor? Tower dropped down to half HP as well, but... Ultra kill for mind control. 5k in the bank. That's... That's sick. Aftershock. They are playing so well at the moment. But of course... Death Prophet. He's pretty much the only one who's farmed because Chelope. He's still at 3.5k net worth. He has less than Ancient Operation. Spectre, not the fastest farmer, so... They're gonna have to get a lot more buildings, a lot more teamfights where the Spectre is also present to be able to properly just make a comeback because net worth wise, Power Rangers, they're still ahead. Even if by a little bit, by about 800. XP, 2k, make it 3.5. Net worth, pretty more or less zeroed out. Chaslo wanted to go for something. Ice Blast even was fl fl flung out. But G4, about 600 gold away from the Aghanims. That's gonna be pretty damn good already, to be honest. Disruptor is level 8. Doesn't really need any more. I mean, you have your max glimpse and it's gonna be fine. And just... 
To explain again, why does it say Power Rangers 1, 0? Just because I messed up. It's actually Aftershock 1, but I put that uh, one game advantage to the wrong team, so that's about it. It's still Aftershock 1, 0 at the moment already. Dicharado might get punished, 0G. He gets scouted out by the creeps. Well, that's just the tower down. They didn't do anything at all. They still want to go for Dichara. He's going for the ultimate. Can he escape though? They have the glimpse, of course. They're going to glimpse him back. A Jupe easy kill. Kinetic field. Gonna be there. Primal split. Oh no, the static storm is there, but he got the primal split off already. Finally, he was managed to, was able to connect or cast it. Mind control. He even got doomed up. Exorcism came off cool. And now Kefka. No, the snowball saves him for the time being. Seroji, Ice Blast, will he bring him down? Cheshire Cat, cut stand up, Walrus punches will mind control. He's just right clicking. He's doomed, but he doesn't care. They're going to get charge low now as well. Mind control. The two men gets the Yule Scepter off. That's going to be four heroes down. Yes, the tower also went down, but... Bleh. Four for one exchange. Aftershock, they're just taking fight after fight after fight. Just imagine if after the, if Chelope on the Spectre had also gotten a good start. This, this would be just so sick already. And mind control, he has level 2 exorcism, 12 bloodstone charges. He more or less just finished up the bloodstone before that fight and just got the immediate 4 charges. Now XP about 7k lead, gold, net worth 1k, not too bad, just because they lost the tier 1 themselves as well. But we do have a disconnect from charge law, hopefully nothing too serious, hopefully nothing too long. And it's gonna come back to us soon enough. And mostly I hope that it's just not a hope. But 18 to 6, Aftershock, they are tripling the kill score of Power Rangers. Of course, a similar thing happened in the last game where Power Rangers were tripling that of Aftershock. So, this game is by no means over. I mean, Tombringer farming reasonably still. I mean, has a hand of Midas and Devourer after all, has the Blink Dagger now. Lycan has yet to become powerful, but he's going for a BKB it looks like. And without the Necrobook, that already in itself hinders them quite a lot. But, do we have Aghanim Scepter flying out? Yes, Aghanim Scepter... Is flying out as we speak. And I, that might be a slightly more important factor even than just everything else. And just a second guys, gonna have to watch about a tiny thing, tiny tiny. Maybe the admins have released some necessary information, doesn't look like it. I don't know that like my insanity versus denial game 2 is Play it probably a li little bit later. But for this game, Power Rangers, they're just. They're gonna have to rely so heavily on the Ice Blast, Aghanim Scepter buff. If they get it properly, they're gonna be just fine. If not, though, they're gonna be like super screwed. <laughs> That's just the safest way to put it. And well, have they, no, no reasoning, no nothing. Just disconnect and that's it. If they stay disconnected, disconnected for long enough, I'm just gonna ask like what's going on, how long. But looking at Tusk, he's level 11 as well, has 1.8k in the bank. Might want to go for the blink dagger, I mean, if you can blink in, snowball and uh, just get somebody in who is doomed. That's gonna be pretty good. Just buy the valuable seconds necessary. Or just get close enough to actually snowball Lycan or anything like that. The graphs, I guess they haven't updated. They're still the same, yeah. Only 1k network for A-Shock, so... Considering how many kills they've gotten more than Power Rangers and tower-wise... Th Power Rangers are even a tower behind. So, just Spectre, man. Spectre not farming is what's keeping Power Rangers in the game. Plus that that and soon to be a level 2 Ice Blast with an Agony Scepter. I mean, really, if you get doomed and again and ice blasted, you are gonna be done for. Like, even if you don't take any single points of damage after that, I think you still might die. At least it should apply for most heroes. Maybe Death Prophet is pretty tanky, so he's gonna stay alive probably. Tide Hunter possibly so, and he has a bracer as well on the Tide Hunter now. Eight staff of Wizardry, so I guess four staff into that refresher orb maybe. I still think Pipe would be excellent on really any of their heroes. Maybe even Tusk could build a Pipe. I mean, he doesn't have the greatest mana pool, but against Ice Blast, especially against Ice Blast, I, I think you should go for one. Now Kefka finds J4. Can he get the kill though? Going for the TP out. Come on, Ravage, Ravage. No. 
You thought you can get it without. Didn't deem it worthy to pop your ultimate for a measly ancient apparition. In the meantime, mind control. He got the tier 2 with the exorcism. Easily done. Another 2k gold in the bank. So... What does Power Rangers do? Mind control? Go run through the wolves who get resummoned anyway. I guess they wait for the next exorcism if you're aftershock and go for another tier 2. I mean, there's still a tier 1 standing, so I guess it was my bad. They were even on towers before this tier 2 fell. I didn't... I don't know how, but I didn't notice this tier 1 at all. But we're 20 minutes in. Kill score wise, it's looking freaking awesome. Uh, well, net worth now, almost 3k in a shocks favor, XP about 7,500. To be honest, I've seen bigger leads today already and they have been turned around. So it would just be appropriate for this game to also be a turnaround game. Mind Control goes into the mid lane, can he get the silence to follow? Yes he can, but he needs some additional lockdown. He's not getting it at the moment, but there's the glimpse, kinetic field, static storm as well, he's out of it, but they don't care. Waller's punch comes out, Ice Blast. He's there onto mind control. Can they bring him down though? It's 17 seconds. Wolves expire. Primal split used for virtually nothing. Cello Pick gonna go for Sonneko. He's still not doing any damage at all almost, but with the help of the other heroes, it's gonna be enough mind control. He got doomed, but there's the ravage. Only onto Cheshire Cat, but it's gonna be enough. They want to make sure Death Prophet does not die. And it's probably not gonna happen. Cheshire Cat might survive as well as Cello Pick drops low. Thunderclap brings him down from Chatlow. There's the snowball, another waller spawn, Cheshire Cat keeps himself alive, the haste rune, it wore off, Ice Shard, now it's gonna push them forward, Kefka, no, 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 the glimpse back, oh, it's gonna be enough to get the kill, Disruptor gets it, for a second it's like, Tidehunter, wow, he was fourth up, but he's gonna shatter now, so Tidehunter chasing that far, but then the glimpse onto the Doombringer made it so the Tidehunter chased uselessly, and then died, Ice Blast, so Ancient Depression, doing some work with the against Ice Blast at least, and in the end, the fight was a 3 for 2. And Tidehunter and the Spectre died. So it was two cores. So not a horrible trade for Power Rangers, to be honest. Although they lost their two cores as well. But yeah, it's it's not all that bad, all things considered. Death Prophet didn't even get to use his Exorcism in that fight. Although, just get the same fight, but Exorcism activated. It's just a whole different story. And looks like Ashok, they want to go for a tier 1 minimum. Maybe even go for 2. Doom will be off cooldown in 28. Ice Blast might already be enough as well. Blink. They were looking for something. Magoma, he has to blink. They're gonna find Tichara. Gonna get the Thunderstrike. But Shiroji taking so much damage. The Wolves. Oh man. You need you need a gem or something to deal with the Wolves. They're just... They're, so, they're, they're rather tanky. They do a lot of damage. And Shiroji, he's gonna have to back all the way home now. Magoma doesn't have any urn charges either. They're even gonna use the Kinetic Field for that. Chelopi going for a Yasha now. He, he doesn't even dream of a Radiance, at least not an early one. Or not even a mid mid time one. <laughs> Probably not dreaming of one at all. One hundred seventy one HP only on the tower, but Power Rangers they are defending it. They have the primal split. They have all of their ultimates ready. So they're definitely ready to fight if it does come to down, down, to, down to that, if it comes down to exchanging blows. Looking at the graphs. Nothing more drastic than it was a couple of minutes ago. Just because not a huge team fight has been won for either side. Shashla, Makoma is going to run into them. Snowball, can he get it off? Yes, Polar Punch first, Snowball second. Horn comes out as well, they're going to go for Shashla. Do they have the silence? Oh no, he doesn't get the Prime Split off again. Ice Blast does come out, only connects onto Kefka, I think. Do they still have the glimpse? Yes, they do, but can they connect it onto anybody? Well, they have it. Yes, there's the glimpse coming out. The timing is decent enough, and Dichara is gonna go down to the Thunderstrike. No escape from this. Negative burn as well, just to be on the safe side. So they get the two kills, two cores down. Once again, no Primal Split from Brewmaster. He's getting heavily hindered just from the silences, and... Well, yeah, the silences, both from the Static Storm as well as the Silence of the Death Prophet. And next fight, it's gonna be a level 3 exorcism, 16 blast on charges already on mind control, 4k in the bank, can go for Shivas, can go for her heart, can go for anything, maybe a PKB even to be on the safe side. But good fight for Aftershock, Power Rangers, them getting the jump, I would have expected that much more. But Ice Blast, completely missed, just flew over mind control, so I guess that's good enough. Tower will get denied, maybe, nope, you'll set it up mind control. He's on the run now, has to play it safe, has a region room bottled up, but... Ice Blast, man, the 17 second duration is sick. But to get the tower, Seroji even just goes down. 
If you take like any damage and you get ice blasted, just maybe like a, a few wolf right clicks. If you're a support, squishy as the disruptor, you are just done for. And whoever just tuned in, I'm gonna reiterate just to be on the safe side. First of all, it's the BOCE, the Battle of Central Europe Group D, a two game series Aftershock versus Power Rangers. And this score here is wrong because I messed up. It's actually Aftershock 1 0 ahead of Power Rangers. Which might be 2-0 if they keep going as they have at the moment, but Power Rangers is trying to sneak into Roshan. They have a Medallion of Crucible, Wave of Terror, towards the side where they're pretty sure that there's no vision for Aftershock. And it's going to be a pretty easy Roshan as well. It's not going to take them all that long and exactly what they need as well. And well, of course they need a little bit extra even, just because Spectre, he is number 3 in net worth now. Just a few couple of fights and he's slowly catching up. Drums, Yasha, 1.8k, might be still aiming for that Radiance even now. Cheshirkat is going to have his PKB on the Doombringer, so that's a positive. Static Storm and things won't affect you, although there will still be Death Prophet Exorcism. So maybe you want to just doom up the Death Prophet if you can, but 4.8k on Death Prophet. Might even want to invest into something like a Lincoln Sphere, just to be on the safe side. I mean, there's not too, much th too many things that can pop it. Although if you don't have a PKB and Lincoln, then it's like level death, pop it or something. But Exorcism level 3 used. That's going to be a tier 2 down. Top lane. Jello P might be in trouble. Chaser Yep. Going to doom up the Spectre. Nowhere to run. No escape coming in. They're just going to keep on with the push mind control. Too bad Exorcism is going to wear off. They are TPing in actually. They want to get the counter. Kefka, he's around. He can use his Ravage. He's going to pop it. Going to catch free. Chaser Cat, PKB and TP out. Well, I guess it catches caught 2 because Chaser Cat had a t PKB. J4 going to get thrown up in the air by a Yule Scepter of mind control. And that's going to be a 2 for 1. And the tier 2 also went down. Plus it's a gem for Aftershock if they just see it on the ground. Oh yes they do in the end. So considering it was way better for Aftershock in the end. I mean Spectre he was dead regardless just because he got doomed and was being chased down. Now Dichara gonna run into Serochi. He has the static storm kinetic field. Is he gonna go for it Dichara? I'm gonna go for the counter kill just howl onto the wolves. They still have vision glimpse back. Kinetic field is there. Static storm as well. But the shapeshift is activated. Is it gonna be enough for them to get the damage done? I think it is another creep storm. Gonna get thrown up in there. There's the ice shards as well, and that's the Aegis popped. And suddenly he don't ha doesn't have his ultimate anymore. Gonna come back to wait for a walrus punch. Kinetic field as well can't run away. Snowball being formed into the Chara. It goes and he goes down the second time. At least he was able to purchase up a Mithril hammer. But wow, Death Prophet finished up refresher orb. 27 minutes in, gold per minute 591. He has 100 more gold per minute than a Devourer minus 2. That's just... Wow. At least Chachlo also gonna have a BKB soon enough. Aghanim Scepter not too close for Seroji. So... BKB is gonna be enough for them to just win the games. Just a second guys. Let's see. Need to help out a, another caster who wants to know who, how he can just assign streams and join Dota. And yes, Refresher Orb is there, indeed. BKB on Chashla finished, so with the double BKBs, maybe they can actually try to take a fight, but they're gonna have to for sure have a primal split in the fight. So far, most primal splits have just either been like defensive or Ashok have been able to back off by the time the primal split comes out. There's been like maybe one fight where the Primal Split has actually done a decent amount. And Tidehunter up to 2.1k gold. Not too sure if he wants to build for the Refresher straight away or wants to go for a pipe after all in the end. Tusk going for his Sanj. Heaven's Halberd not going to be a bad item although like I'm going to have a BKB. But as the BKB uh, dwindles down in the duration, Heaven's Halberd just gets more value and although you can't disarm him as easily when he has a BKB you're still gonna have the evasion aspect of it so not a bad choice at all to be honest there's mind control popping ultimate level 1 20 bloodstone charges oh my freaking god he's gonna respawn immediately even if he does die no boots of travels at the moment of course so that's gonna hinder him a little bit now ice blast connected as well exorcist gonna last longer than the 17 seconds I think although he still has to be careful like anything can bring him to the brink, he gets the tier 3, is he gonna back off now? There's the Ravage coming out, they use the haunt as well, Warlock's punch into the TTR, like, and he's down, Cheshire Cat, he's on the run. 
Mind control gets all the life back. Refresher orb, ultimate number two comes out. Chachla, he's in so much trouble. Gonna have to go for the primal split in the end, but he just might lose all the rulings here. Or is he? If the ghost do enough, just focus fire. They're gonna, yeah, they're gonna get the rulings down. I don't think they can escape, but yeah, another Ice Blast is coming. It's going to connect onto 4, it's going to be huge. Level death onto Mind Control, doomed up as well. He's done for. I don't think he can escape. Oh, never mind. He, he didn't get... How the hell did he not get hit by the Ice Blast? So he might even be fine, although he's going to get swapped back in. Mind Control going to lose his life, but the melee Rex went down. They brought down a couple of heroes themselves. Jellopy wants to keep on chasing, going to back off in the end. So it's a kind of a defense, but... What Kefka? He goes back in. There's the Snowball onto J4 as well. They're going to get the kill. And they want the range tracks, I guess. Four step forward, ice shards, onto vengeful. Chelopi, he's going to get the kill. Death Prophet actually got it because he instantly respawned. First, just up, boots of travels, rejoined the fight. Still 15 blast on charges left. Oh, no, not cool, man. Not cool at all. So 30 to 11. Still almost tripling the kill score of Power Rangers. Blink in. Oh, the Waller Sponge. It does come out. Ticharano silenced up as well. And he goes down again. No buyback on him. Ice Blast. Not connecting with anybody either. So that's just two spells on cooldown. 65 seconds for another Exorcism. So the push maybe isn't going to be as fast. But it's going to be plenty fast. They get the range racks. They once again hold the racks advantage. 10k network lead. About a 11,000 XP lead. Now they're even teeping back to defend their own tier 2. Power Rangers, they're really on, just on the back foot at the moment. Especially if Mind Control comes in with another double ravage. If the Ice Blast connects and he gets doomed, then he's still screwed on the Death Prophet. So he can't do much about that. Might want to sell Tranquil Boats and still invest into a BKB. I mean, you can get doomed, but at least it will help against the Ice Blast a little bit. Or you can just tank up, build Heart of the Rask. Did he just buy a bottle? No, he, he sold it. Just strong click. What would he want to go for? Pretty good question. I, I think heart is just a solid choice. Maybe AC wouldn't be too bad. Tide Hunter in the meantime, going for the Refresher Orb. Oh wow. I guess I dropped a crap ton of frames at one point. Maybe it's hitbox not taking them in at the time. Who should be fine stream? Huh. I mean, it should be back up soon enough. That's... Yeah, I just dropped a lot of frames at one point. Randomly, I mean, I hadn't dropped any at all almost the entire evening. So it's going to be back soon enough. Picnic time, picnic time first. Then the stream is going to be back because it's, at least the stream didn't drop. I have no clue what exactly happened, but... Yes, this is a best of two. Tasher, 178 and Aftershock, they're already 1-0 ahead. Because I messed up. Power Rangers actually are 0 So it's like, this yellow belongs to here. All your bases are belong to us. All your bases are belong to us, indeed. Jellopy does have a Diffusal Blade, so he's like, screw Radiance, I don't even need it. I want to see his net worth, actually. It's still number 3, Doombringer number 2. Smoke up by 4. They made sure that nobody is around, or no wards or anything is around with the Sentry. Or maybe Wolves. And I just saw another item picked up. I don't remember which it was. Aghanim Scepter. Oh, Seroji has Aghanim Scepter! Oh god, if you get caught in the, the static storm now, there's not gonna be no there's there's not gonna be anything for you. No items, no nothing. So stream is fine. Everything is fine. The stream didn't drop, but it just didn't transmit any frames at one point. But there's exorcism number one. And he's gonna almost respawn immediately. He's gonna take like 12 seconds to respawn unless they get a few kills. Power Ranger, are they really going for the base trade? Cheshire Cat blinks in, gets the Doom, but a little bit too soon, and because of that, Ice Blast misses. And there's the Horn coming out, Cheshire Cat. He's slowed down already from the Sigil. There's the Ravage, only on to teach her. It's, it's gonna have to be enough. Cheshire has his own BKB as well. Gonna fight in the BKB, but oh, the Primal Split is not gonna get it off. Oh my god. He tried to go man mode, but now Doom ends. This just might be Rex and Double Rex with GG, maybe even. 
In the meantime, you can see Chelope wants to go for the tier 2 just so they can go for the triple reaction, go for the super sized mega creeps. But Power Rangers, that fight was just screwed, and that's gonna be a refresher or finish on the Tide Hunter now. Picks it up from the enemy base, easy racks mid lane. And that is GG well played. Aftershock, they take this series 2 0. Oh my freaking god. Aftershock, they, they played so damn well today. They've come back from. At least two games from a 10k deficit like 30 minutes in, in both XP and net worth. And in this game, they just, they played so damn well. They were always ready when Power Rangers wanted to go for some aggression. TP assistance was always there to come, just so fast. So, extremely well played. They are 4-0 at the moment. So, this is gonna be it for a little bit. In about an hour and a half, we're gonna be back here at 20 CET with... Let me check, I'm gonna tell you just in a second. With Power Rangers versus My Insanity at 20 CET. Unless something drastic happens. But thank you so much for tuning in guys. I do hope you enjoyed. I do apologize for the small picnic in between. But I don't know why the frames dropped. In any case. If you like the cast. Be sure to follow Hefla TV on our Facebook and Twitter. It's Hefla TV for both. The links are also below the stream if you're interested. As for myself personally. It's at culture. So free, feel free to leave me some feedback on Twitter, Facebook. Even Twitch inbox or something. But for now. I might keep the stream running, we'll see, hour and a half, maybe not, maybe will, but in any case, back at 20 CT, plus of course, Hefla TV HP1 is still going, I think, or not too sure, maybe they aren't either, or they're gonna have Power Rangers versus Denial coming up, yes, so check that out, but for this, for now, from me, it's it, see you at 20 CT, but check out Hefla TV HP1, I'm gonna link it in chat as well, so guys, see you for that game.